Okay. So the first paper uh, is one, indeed one of these Best Paper Award nominees, and it's entitled Non-Euclidean Motion Planning with Graphs of Geodesically Convex Sets. Take it away, Tom. If we look at motion planning today, <laughs> if we look at motion planning today, most algorithms fall into two main categories. The first is sampling-based planning. It relies on drawing random samples from the configuration space and connecting them into a graph structure. Graph search is well understood, and we know we can get global probabilistic completeness. But the number of samples required may grow exponentially with the dimension in the worst case, and it's difficult to produce smooth paths or handle dynamics. The second main category is trajectory optimization. By transcribing the motion planning problem in optimization form, one can add all manner of costs and constraints, making it straightforward to handle dynamics and produce, and produce smooth paths. These methods also scale well with dimension, but the problems are non-convex in all but the simplest cases, making global optimality or even feasibility far from guaranteed. We want to get the best of both worlds, and then some. That is, we want to produce smooth, globally optimal paths in high dimensional configuration spaces. To tackle this problem, we turn our attention to a common challenge for both methods, collision avoidance. One of the main sources of non-convexity in trajectory optimization is the presence of obstacles, as constraining a path to lie outside of a collision region, such as the red region on the figure on the left, is generally non-convex. Instead, we can cast such a constraint as containment within a convex safe set, such as these blue regions. We can use this to get very strong collision-free guarantees, as it's enough to just check the control points of a trajectory to ensure the whole trajectory is collision-free. And now, with many trajectory pieces, we have to connect them all into a single path from the start to the goal. A recent framework called the Graph of Convex Sets, or GCS for short, has shown great promise for this purpose. It transcribes this problem as a mixed integer convex program, but we have a line of work that shows that in practice we can just solve the convex relaxation and still get high quality paths. Now this is a convex optimization method and it's necessarily meant for Euclidean spaces, but many robot configuration spaces of interest are non-Euclidean. And this is where our work comes in. Let's look at an example. Consider a robot with two revolute joints, both of which have no joint limits. The configuration space of this robot is best represented as a smooth manifold, specifically a torus. Calling this configuration space Q, we turn our attention to its collision-free subset, M bar. And now we can describe the general form of optimization problems that we're interested in. Let's break this optimization problem down. We want to find a path gamma so as to minimize its arc length. We require that gamma be piecewise differentiable and collision-free. And of course, we specify the start and the goal points. Now, this is an abstract problem statement. To actually solve this on a computer, we first take the original GCS problem and we generalize it to work on smooth manifolds through the language of geodesic convexity. Then, we describe a transformation procedure to move all of the problem data back into Euclidean space, yielding a GCS-style problem. And finally, we add an additional requirement on the underlying curvature of the space to ensure this resulting problem is indeed convex. Now, let's put this framework into action and produce whole body motion plans for a PR2 mobile robot. This robot has a 16 degree of freedom configuration space, including a mobile base and multiple revolute joints without limits, all of which can potentially wrap around in the wrong direction. For example, with standard nonlinear trajectory optimization, Specifying the wrong joint angle, modulo 2 pi, can yield results such as this. And clearly this is far from optimal. An ordinary GCS is not immune to this problem. As shown here, it exhibits similar behavior. However, our method is able to gracefully handle the wraparound. I want to emphasize that we're getting high quality trajectories for a 16 degree of freedom system and getting strong collision free guarantees. Now, with the confidence that our method will never go the long way around, we can put it into practice for multi-query planning. In this case, for a KUKA IWA arm modified to remove the joint limits from its base joint. As the arm moves the mugs around the shelves, organizing them by color, the arm never goes the long way around, and we always have high-quality collision-free trajectories.
And with that, I'll conclude this talk. Thank you everyone for your time. Questions? Awesome talk, thanks. Um, two questions, so one's easy. Uh, one is, can you say something about planning time? And then the harder question is, can you say more about how you ensure convexity on, it looks like convexity on the manifold and convexity on the projected Euclidean space are related to one another. So those are two great questions. Uh, for the first one, uh, these paths for, the whole, for the, the whole body planning, those generally took anywhere from 20 to 60 seconds, and we've been steadily bringing that runtime down. In, in the early stages, they were more on the scale of minutes. Uh, as we get sort of clever pre-processing tricks and the like. And as for the harder question, uh, the, the proof is in the paper, but basically as long as the, the curvature is flat, so as long as the robot's made out of a uh, single degree of freedom joints, it's always going to be uh, convex. And that's, I think, one of the key results. Is the division into these uh, convex? Sorry, can you speak a little louder? Is the division into these convex regions unique? And if not, then what does optimality mean? Because there's some, there could be many ways to subdivide into the convex regions. Yeah, that's another really great question. So in practice, we do have to come up with an inner approximation. And there's been a series of papers on how to construct convex sets within the collision-free space. Um, so what we would say is we are coming up with the globally optimal path that can be certified as collision-free with respect to the, the offline certification we're coming up with. Okay, time for another quick one. I guess it was a quick one. Just a quick one. Um, you mentioned uh, ensuring ge geodesic convexity. Yeah. Um, and you mentioned one of the steps is to transform from manifold to Euclidean space. Yeah. Generally, that kind of uh, requires your space to be locally Euclidean, locally flat. Uh, is there such an assumption in this case? Uh, yeah. So, I mean, uh, any manifold could be covered in geodesically convex sets, so such a decomposition always exists. Uh, the, the main question of interest is, after you do the transformation, will the problem still be convex? So the conditions we give, which encompass these mobile robots and the revolute joints, are sufficient but not necessary. Uh, and we're currently looking at sort of more general experiments in other contexts that we can continue to have these convexity results. Thank you. Thank you, Thomas.